Welcome to an introduction to financial planning. My name is David Gibson and I'm a director of Gibson Financial Planning Limited. For the benefit of our clients, we work with a number of other professionals who specialize in tax, accountancy and legal matters. Hopefully this presentation will educate you in a non-technical way and it won't last longer than 10 minutes. It should give you a good understanding of what proper financial planning is about, what the different elements are and how they work and fit together. In your mind, draw a tree. Close your eyes and imagine it as best you can, from the top all the way to the bottom. Once you've got that picture in your head, open your eyes and look at my tree. Here it is. There's the top and here's the bottom. Sometimes financial planning is like this tree. There are parts we see, but there are very important parts happening out of sight, below ground. Let's have a quick look at the top of the tree. Each investment option is different offering different results at different times according to the nature of the investment and its level of risk. It's full of the stuff the media loves to talk about, booming share prices, falling interest rates, all of the highs and all of the lows. It should not be a surprise that investments, whatever they are, have good and bad times. We don't freak out just because the season changes. Investment results are important, very important, but people can be misled into thinking that this is the complete picture. It's not. This is only a part of financial planning. Investment results do not start here. Financial planning does not start here. Let's have a quick look at the base of the tree. It makes sense that your tree has to be grounded and grow from the roots. There are six primary roots. Each plays an individual role but works with the others. Let's look at budgeting. Budgeting for a surplus. Without creating a surplus you can't improve your position. You really must spend less than you earn. Surpluses give you choices. Review your budget often. Review your big expenses. Make your money work harder. Create a surplus no matter how small and do it often and do it regularly. With a budget in place you might also want to consider a no-touchy emergency fund. Apart from the obvious that it pays the bills in a real emergency, it provides peace of mind. How much of a fund you need will depend on your regular income. Does it vary from week to week or is it fixed? Look at your spending pattern. Is it high and regular or can you live in the basics? Bread and water. Finally, how do you create such a fund and how do you hold it? And if you can't create it, maybe you need some advice in this area. With a consistent surplus and savings in place, your home is the next major area. Whilst it doesn't produce regular income, it does provide something else that's valuable. Capital growth over the longer term. The property should grow in value over time and your equity should also grow. It's access to this equity that opens up investment opportunities. Your house is usually your largest investment and the creator of the largest debt. It's the worst type of debt. It's non-tax deductible which makes it expensive and because it's expensive it reduces your surplus. So what can you do about it? How do you reduce its cost? How do you pay it off faster? How do you make it much more tax effective? The options will vary according to your circumstances, but there are strategies available to you such as debt consolidation and offsetting your savings. OK, so you're on a roll. Your life has some structure and it's bearing some financial fruit too. You've got some financial assets in place. Firstly, you've got an income that allows you to create a budget surplus. You've also got an emergency fund, maybe in the shape of some investments. And importantly, you've got a home. Now you need to think about protection. Good things happen in life. Unfortunately, but realistically, bad things also happen, and I'm not just talking about a cough or a cold. I'm talking about cancer, stroke, heart attack, premature death or been made redundant, bad accidents. I'm sure you know someone who's been hit hard by life, so it's time to act by looking at what strategies you have in place. What's your plan if? What will you do? Will you live with your mother-in-law? Sell your home? Put your kids out to work? Busk in your local shopping centre? Rely on state benefits. For most people the answer lies in insurance. The question is, what can you afford to lose? What is it that you will insure? Will you insure your income? Will you just cover the bank loans? Do you want to protect your investments? A review of your protection strategies is certainly part of a strong financial plan. The only thing that's certain in life is death and taxes. And estate planning is about making sure, making sure that before we become angels, our assets go to the right people, in the right way, at the right time. Estate planning makes sure that it's your will and not the government's way. So you know you can't take it with you. So you have to take steps to protect your family. 
Things like making a will, making sure that you've got powers of attorney in place, perhaps looking at superannuation and pension nominations, whilst understanding the tax implications of your decisions, all part and parcel of good estate planning. Provided you haven't died prematurely, one of our goals must surely be to plan for our retirement. Retirement means that we've stopped working and our income has stopped, but our expenses keep going. People are living longer and we could be retired for up to 30 years. Retirement planning is extremely important and becomes increasingly so the closer we get to retirement age. However, we still need to address the questions, how much will we need, how much will we put aside now, and will our investments do the job for us? Now let's look at our investment tree. There are obviously different options with different payoffs and returns and different risks attached. Lower hanging fruit is easier to reach but often not as big or as tasty as fruit higher up the investment tree. Fruit at the top of the tree is harder to reach so we'll need to be a little more careful even though it is potentially more attractive. The fruit you desire has to be relevant to your goal and your appetite for risk. The higher the risk the better prepared you must be. You may need to be more patient you certainly should look to protect those investments and also protect the cash flow that feeds them. It's vital that you understand exactly what you're investing in and how that investment works. They can be so complex, so ask questions. What are you actually investing for? Are you investing for the income it provides or do you want capital growth? Is your investment basket diversified or are you just happy to put all your apples in one basket? What are the tax benefits and the tax implications associated with the investment? Do you want to control the investments or are you happy to have someone else manage them? And if they are going to manage them, what sort of manager are they? Are they aggressive managers or value-add managers or passive managers? There are lots and lots of questions to ask, so seek advice. Investment planning is a living and very changing dynamic tree. Things do go out of shape, things grow too quick and need to be pruned and some things just don't work unless you give them some attention so you do need a root review and review regularly and importantly be prepared to act when things go pear shaped. Things that could trigger a review are change in career or redundancy, growing families, divorce and marriage breakups, death or sickness, changes to the investment climate, changes to tax rates and rulings and interest rate changes. All of these things and more can potentially affect your investment tree so it's important that you do review and review regularly. There's an ancient proverb that asks, when is the best time to plant a tree? And the answer, 20 years ago. Of course that brings us to the second question, when's the second best time to plant a tree? As soon as you can. Well that's it. That's the end of this video. I hope it's been useful and thank you for making the time to watch it and I hope that you've enjoyed it.